crisis in the, in the in the journey of the children of Israel. You see, God had departed from them. He had withdrew His presence, His glory, His 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 uh, uh, power that went before them. He had He had got disgusted with God with the children of Israel, and because of their sins and their rebellion and their and their idolatry, amen, God had removed himself and, and uh, left them without his presence. Well, you know, the, you know what, what they did to deserve this. They, uh, while he was in the mountain now, receiving the commandments of the Lord, while God was writing upon the tablet stone with his own finger, amen, 39 days he'd been up there, he was almost ready to come down out of the mountain. And the people got tired of waiting. Hey, Amen. I don't, I don't understand all that happened. But I know that what they did was an abomination in the presence of God. And when Moses came out of the mountain, he had the tablets of stone in his hand, arms. And he was coming out of the mountain. He began to hear a sound. Joshua was with him. Joshua heard the sound. And Joshua said, it sounds like, there's war in the camp. You know, of course, Joshua being a man of war, that's the first thing he thought of is them Amalekites again have rolled in here. We better hurry down here and help them fight. But a worse enemy than the Amalekites had got among them. Amen. And so Moses said, no, it's not the sound, amen, of war. It's the sound of, of, of rejoicing and playing and rising and singing and dancing. Amen. They had got the, uh, a the gold out of their ears and off their fingers and melted it down. And, and, and uh, you know, you heard what Aaron said when Moses, in, uh, you know, interrogated him over it. He did like a lot of us. He just made a big old excuse. And he said it like this. He said, well, the people pressed me. Now I just, uh, you know, put this, uh, burned this oil, melted this uh, gold down, and out came this golden calf. And they had a calf there worshiping. Amen. You know, they wasn't a whole lot of worship going on here tonight. And I really think the reason was there was another, amen, uh, object of worship in this house tonight. You say, brother, don't jump on us. Oh, I'm not. But that's just the way it is. Amen. We either worship the true God or we worship another God. It might have been the old God of pleasure or the God of relaxation or the God of what am I going to eat when this service is over. Amen. But whatever the problem was, uh, amen, they had put their gold in. Uh, amen. And, and uh, now they were worshiping a golden calf. Now, I will tell you something. Uh, you can live like you want to live. You can do what you want to do. But you're not going to do that and keep the presence of God. You can come to church and twiddle your thumbs uh, or balance your checkbook uh, or whatever other entertainment you want to get involved in. Uh, amen. But unless we're worshiping the true God, oh, sometimes we get, we run out of patience. Uh, amen. But brother, if they'd have waited one more day. I said if they'd have waited one more day. Uh, amen. But God came down. And you know what happened. The judgment of the Lord came upon them. Amen. And God withdrew His Spirit. Amen. Now I want you to know something, church. Amen. We're not going to win this battle by power nor by might. I'm not a good enough entertainer. And the singers as good as they've been for all these years. Amen. Are not good enough. Amen. To entertain you into some kind of spiritual. Amen. Reality. Amen. Come on now. The the only way we're going to survive. Amen. We've made it this far. Amen. By the presence of God. Amen. The pillar of a cloud by day and the fire by night. And it's no wonder that Moses said, I'm not going any further. We've come this far by the power of God and we'll go on by the power of God. Amen. I know we're in a worldly generation. I know we're in a compromising generation. I know we're in an idolatrous generation. But brother, if we trade off the power of God, we trade off the glory of God. If we trade off the presence of God, we trade off, amen, the unction of the Holy Ghost. Oh, somebody say amen. I tell you what, amen, Moses said it right. Amen, he said, I'm going to pitch a tabernacle outside of this wicked camp. It might be we'll have to pitch our tabernacle outside of the camp, amen, to get the presence of the Lord to fall. 
all. But whatever it takes, amen, we cannot afford, amen, to go any farther without the glory of God. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit now. How many feels like helping the preacher now? Huh? Moses, and here, here's, where, here's my text. When Moses, I love this. I'm going to take my time. i got a burden for my church here. I want you to visualize this with me. This won't take long. I want you to visualize with me. When they saw him take that tent, God had already removed himself. That cloud that they had followed, amen, at the daytime, every step they took, they had to look up and see that cloud leading them along. At night, when the cloud was no longer visible, amen, it became a pillar of fire. And they followed that fiery pillar. And when that pillar would settle down, amen, a column, a pillar, a column of fire. When that fire would settle down, and don't you think the neighborhood didn't notice. Amen, when they looked out over across that desert and they saw that pillar of fire, they said, there's the children of God over there. Amen, Moses said, Lord, is it not your presence that has separated us from all the other nations? Amen, I love the world. I'll tell you what, the thing that will separate the God's people, amen, from a lost and dying world will be that presence of God and the glory of the Lord. Are you listening to me? I'm not talking about just a presence, amen, that causes you to feel goosebumps, amen, and really elated at times. But I'm talking about a presence that will take you through the Red Sea, amen, that will take you through your enemy, amen, that will help you go through the hard times, amen. Oh, I feel like I need to preach to the church here tonight. I want you to look what, at Benjamin, or at uh, Joshua. I want you to look at this verse. He pitched that tent out, the Bible said, afar off. I, want, I wonder tonight, and I'm not jumping on you, but you're my flock, and I've got to work on you a little bit tonight. I wonder how long we could survive if God decides he's going to pitch afar off. That worries me. Does it you? Huh? There are some things in my life that I really, as, as, I don't know hardly how to say it, but when I got saved, hey amen, there's a lot of things I knew right off the bat. I can't do this anymore. But then there were some things that were, were, were just, I, love, I like doing. I, and you say, well, man, you didn't get saved. Oh, yes, I did. But there were things I, I just know. It was friends that I loved being with uh, and had been buddies all in years. Uh, and they went places uh, that I knew that I, I really enjoyed. Uh, but I knew and, and really in their self alone, uh, in another environment, uh, wouldn't have been anything wrong with. Uh, but now I was trying to go to church, uh, trying to live right, uh, trying to stay sanctified in my mind. Uh, and I knew that there's going to have to be a line drawn. Uh, amen. If I was going to keep my religion, uh, I wish somebody help me preach in this house tonight. Uh, I cannot afford. Uh, there's been times in my life, uh, even after I've been pastoring and preaching, uh, amen, that bitterness would try to creep into my life. Uh, and I had to make a choice. Uh, I either had to turn loose of those uh, things, those bitter things, uh, and keep the anointing of God, uh, or, or risk losing uh, that anointing. Uh, I've drove to this church uh, right here uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, battling. And I know it is, I ought to not even tell it. Uh, Amen. It's not even worth a tape ministry. Uh, amen. But I was battling. Uh, amen. Wanting to hate. Uh, amen. Wanting to harbor bitterness. Uh, amen. And all the time knowing. Uh, amen. As long as I harbored those feelings. Uh, amen. I could not get anointed. Uh, I would not be blessed of God. Uh, are you listening to me? Uh, I cried all morning. Uh, I came down here on a little dry Sunday morning. Uh, I got up and delivered my little sermon. Uh, y'all weren't blessed or impressed. Uh, but I felt the anointing, uh, and I shouted, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'd rather have the anointing, uh, amen, as I have what the, amen, the devil tried to put off on me. Uh, I tell you what, we cannot make it uh, without the glory of God. Uh, we must guard the glory. Uh, that's what Joshua was doing uh, in that tabernacle uh, when Moses went back to the camp. Uh, amen, Joshua stayed uh, in the tabernacle uh, and departed not out uh, of the tabernacle. Uh, brother, we found the glory. Uh, we better abide where the glory is. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I 
wish I could preach to you today. You know, there's a fine line sometimes between right and wrong. You hear me? I said there's a fine line. But there's no gray area. Did you not get that? Did you hear what I said? There is no gray area. It's either right or wrong. But sometimes that borderline is so fine. Hey, man. But I want to tell you, instead of you walking along that fine line of right and wrong, get just as close, amen, to this crazy world as you can get. Amen. You know what the rules are, but you'll just tiptoe so close, amen, to the rule book as you can and still get a, amen, kind of like living on a, in a border town. You speak both languages fluently. But I tell you, that's not going to make it in the, amen, child of God's life. Uh, you ought to not come to the preacher and say, what can I do and still be saved? Uh, you ought to run, amen, to the cross, uh, amen, and cling to the cross, uh, amen, not allow the world, uh, amen, because, listen, uh, amen, it's the glory of God's at stake here. Uh, you remember, uh, amen, uh, uh, Eli's sons, Phineas and Hophni, is that their names? Uh, amen. If I got that wrong. Uh, amen. But his two boys, uh, amen, that uh, uh, they send away the glory of God. Uh, you say, what is the glory of God? Uh, amen. It is the overpowering presence, uh, amen, of the God of heaven. Uh, amen. Listen to me. Uh, it was that pillar of fire uh, and that cloud of smoke, uh, amen, that led them, amen, on their journey. Uh, amen. If that leaves us, uh, We'll be roaming around in a lost and dying world. We won't know if we're saved or lost. We won't know if we got the Holy Ghost or some bad spirit. We won't know if holiness is right. Amen. We ought to loosen up a little bit and build a crowd. But I'll tell you what, if you get the glory, amen, back in your life, it'll clear up your direction. Hallelujah. I'll preach to you tonight. If it kills the devil, I'm going to preach to you. Listen to this. Man, I love it. It said, Joshua turned again to the camp. I often wondered. I want you to notice this. i got to get this. When the people realized Moses was going to that tabernacle, he called it now the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, why did he call it that? Amen. And I want you to notice. It explains it right here in these verses. No longer is God dwelling in the center of the camp. He moves out. And he says, now everybody that comes now will come out of their own free will. They're going to come to me. And so those that wanted to seek the Lord, they had to get up and go towards the tabernacle in the congregation of far off. Brother, they just had committed. And you know what the Bible said when they rose up? And I'll tell you, we are in the same generation today. The first thing they did, and everybody, I don't care what they're doing. I don't care I don't care what the world is doing. I don't care if they're going to a race. I don't care if they're going to a, to a picnic. I don't care if they're going, why they're going. Whatever the world is doing, they'll get naked before they get done. So it's quiet in here. Some of the, oh, yeah, and I, I could say church, too, now. Amen. That's right. Come on now. I've been to churches where they're doing weddings and the pastor's wife, amen, uh, 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 doing with the, in the wedding and, and didn't, didn't have enough clothes to wad a shotgun. That's right. Come on now. Y'all not going to help me. I want to tell you right now. Praise God. Amen. I don't care what the world is doing. You watch what they're doing. It don't matter what they're doing. Uh, amen. They're going to commit some sexual sinful act. Uh, or they're going to get drunk and take their clothes off. Uh, amen. Every, that's right. Uh, amen. You that love your television. I want you to just, just sit there when you get home. Uh, if you're going to watch it anyway. Uh, I want you just to see how much nakedness uh, that marches across that screen. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, where that's coming from. Uh, that is coming from Hollywood uh, that has none of the glory of God, uh, none of the Spirit of God. Uh, and I want to tell you something while you're here. Uh, if you come in here with that same spirit, uh, your clothes are short and thin and tight, uh, amen, that it leaves nothing for the imagination. You're not being controlled by the glory of God. You're being controlled, uh, amen, by Hollywood, uh, amen, and that idolatrous spirit, amen. You say, I don't like that preacher. That's all right. I'm just preaching to you, then. 
The Bible said they rose up to play, entertain themselves, bring pleasure to themselves. That, that golden calf. And the Bible said they became naked. Now, you can take that by what it's worth. Some commentary said that they, uh, you know, brought shame to their self. Amen. I know I'm boring some of you. And the reason I'm boring you is ain't your brand. But you're, this is the brand of this church. I'll just tell you that right now. Amen. It's holiness or hell around here. Come on now. I tried. Uh, amen. And I'll tell you when uh, you'll want to uncover yourself uh, or look upon those. Uh, our world is eat up with pornography. Amen. And I'll tell you the internet. Uh, amen. As, as important as it is in this world, uh, it is as vile. Uh, amen. One, a kid can click. Uh, amen. One word uh, and see things that you have never seen in all your life. Uh, amen. Come on now. Uh, we've got a world that does not believe in God they do not have the glory of God and they're rumbling around in a lost world on the brink of hell and that's where we'll be if we don't get the glory to reign in our lives now here's what I want you to notice when they got when they got here when they saw Moses going to that tent outside the camp I love this they everyone got up, amen, and stood in their tent doors. I want to know where you're at tonight. When I started preaching a little holiness, did you run to the dark corner? You need to come on out of that tent. You need to get back in that tent door. Huh? What, do you, what, what is it in that tent? When we come in here tonight, poor Isaac, I felt for him. Hang in there, buddy. They won't always shout with you. Amen. They might... Half the time, but not always. When you get up and rebuke them about not worshiping the Lord, you might as well get ready. They'll put their heels in. They, they do that all over the country. That's not just a mountain tra- tradition. That's a worldwide tradition. Amen. But I'll tell you what. Go ahead and preach it anyhow. Because I'll tell you what, it's time the church got back into the tent door and began to anticipate and begin to hope. Uh, amen. Because they knew if God don't go with us, uh, if we don't give, if, if His Spirit don't come, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, amen, if He don't come and help us, uh, amen, we're not going to make it. Uh, amen. I know there's scandals across the land. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, we'll have scandal right here in this church house uh, if we don't keep the glory of God in here. You ain't man enough or woman enough uh, to walk straight and sanctified. Uh, Without the glory of God, uh, amen, you won't even want to come, uh, amen, and listen to preaching like this uh, unless you experience the glory of God in your life. We need to get back to the tent door. Uh, we need to get our eyes uh, on the tabernacle of the congregation uh, in anticipation uh, of the presence of God coming down. Is that right or not? I love this. I, I, I won't preach much longer, but I love this right here. Amen. And, I, you know, when God told them, he said, get away from me. How many remember reading that? Did you all read that lately? He said, "You put, you get them away. He said, tell them to strip the ornaments off of them. And let me add this while we're here. Hallelujah. The election's not for a long time. So let me add this right here. Everywhere in, in the Bible, the children of Israel, amen, had their, their jewelry on. God was getting ready to judge them. Now, you just take, you just write that down in your little book. And when God get re- got ready to deal with them, he said, strip yourself of your ornaments. Where in the world they get them anyway? I thought Jacob buried those under that oak tree long ago. I'll tell you where they got them. They got them in Egypt. Same place you got yours. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, Amen. And I'll tell you, if you really want the presence of God back in your life, uh, you'll be shut down, uh, amen, that prideful gold uh, and adorning, uh, amen, you'll shut down, uh, amen, that that look you've got uh, that the world smiles upon. Uh, oh, come on, look up here at me now. Uh, I'm going to give you a dose. I'll do you a while tonight. Uh, I want to preach to you. Uh, we can't survive uh, without the glory of God. Uh, I don't want a church uh, that's built on compromise uh, and politics uh, and petting one another on the back. Uh, I want a church that's built, uh, amen, out of the glory uh, and power, uh, and anointing uh, of the Holy Ghost and fire. They stood, they stood in that tabernacle door. Moses went into the tabernacle. You know, it don't say anything about Joshua right here. To the very end, it don't say a thing about him. But Joshua was going with him the whole time. Huh? You see, you know who that should have been? 
in there in that tabernacle? It should have been Aaron. Huh? I know there's a lot of preachers and some have fallen lately, and I'll tell you, and it breaks our heart, and we're not, we're not happy about it. None of them will go down. Some of our dearest friends we've ever had will bit the dust, and it grieves my heart and just makes me want to check myself. Huh? But I'll tell you what, if ever preacher, hey man, that we know compromises and backslides uh, and builds a golden calf, uh, there'll still be a Joshua, hey man, that wants to go in that tabernacle and stay there until the glory falls. Uh, and then when it falls, uh, he won't leave that tabernacle. Uh, I wish you'd help me preach a little bit. Uh, I'll tell you, you want God to use you. Uh, he's not going to use you. Uh, hey man, when you've got your hands on a golden calf, uh, I wish you'd help me preach a little. Uh, I said, he's not going to anoint us. Uh, hey man, as long as we uh, are worshiping at the golden calf. Uh, we'll have to be in that tabernacle uh, outside the camp. Uh, amen. And our hands will have to be clean uh, from the idolatry of this world. Lord. I can feel the Lord. I want you to notice. Amen. When he went into that tabernacle, that pillar came down. Stood at the door. Oh, I'd love to have been there. I'd love, brothers. I ain't. I've, I've experienced some of you. You remember right up there one night, praying for you. I don't know where you went, but I went flat. It took me an hour to come to myself. You remember? Huh? I always wondered where did what happened? Where did you go? Huh? It, did it, did you feel it? It hit me like. Nothing I've never felt. I wanted to get up. I couldn't open my eyes. And I, I purposely tried to lift, Brother Jerry, my little finger. I couldn't lift my pinky. So God got ready to let me up. When I finally got up, Brother Charlie, after all that time, I didn't even want to speak. There was such a holy spirit around me, I didn't even want to say a word. I wanted to just say, Leave me alone. It was days I didn't want to say nothing. He said, what? Yeah. I didn't want to say one word that would break through that holy shield that was around me. Huh? Brother Mike, you remember? You remember? Wasn't it the Addises were here preaching? Right over in here and you was praying for me? I was right down in that altar here. The power of God took me out again. You say, well, that's the only time. Oh, no. No. There's been times I've been just bawling my eyes out and felt that pillar of cloud. And I'm going to tell you, church, right now, God bless your hearts. I love you. I love you. I'm going to preach for you as long as God wants me and, and lets me live. And I still can do it. I want to preach to you. Amen. And I, I, there's a preacher today I called, <coughs> talking to him, and he, he was having a problem with, a, with an issue in his church. And he said, I'm going, I'm going to deal with this tonight. And I really ought to tell you what it is, just in case anybody here is doing it. It'll take care of two churches in one night. <laughs> I really hadn't noticed it, you know. But he said he was having trouble with this one thing that, that people were doing. And he said, I'm going to hit it. And he said, and he said uh, you know, and here, it really, here's what he said. If you got, give me a scripture, he said. Huh? I said, well, brother, I, and I told him, you know, I told him how I felt about the scriptures and what, what was the error of it was and, and then I said, but I, I said, and I don't take me wrong now. I want you to listen to this. I said, don't you take me wrong. But I said, I'm going to tell you something right here. I said, you, you can deal with that tonight, and you probably should. If God's dealing with you, you ought to deal with that. I said, but if, if God don't get in your heart, it ain't going to work. You said, well, you mean we quit preaching it? Uh-uh. I'm just telling you, hey amen, I'm telling you what we really need to turn it around. I'm telling you what we really need, uh, hey amen, for you to get off of that borderline, uh, hey amen, and into the glory of God again. Uh, we cannot survive uh, with the Lord afar off from us. Uh, he's got to be nigh to us. Uh, hey amen, come on now. Uh, hey amen, I'm not a fanatic. Uh, I don't believe in fanaticism. Uh, hey amen, I believe we got to live whatever it takes to keep God's presence in our life. Because uh, we're going to need Him. Uh, I said, we're going to need him. 
Amen. We need him in the morning. We're going to need him in the night. We're going to need him in the noon time. We're going to need him all the time. We need him in this service tonight. We're going to need him on the job. We're going to need him in our homes. We're going to need him at youth camp. We're going to need him at camp meeting. We're going to need him when our elders get sick. We're going to need him. Amen. I wish you'd help me preach a little bit. We need to guard the glory. Because that's where the presence of God is. Oh, I don't want to preach to you too long here. Amen. But I want you to notice. I'm almost done. This is more like a three, three-pointer here. But I'm going to. The Bible said when they saw that glory come down, what did they do? Would you help me, Brother Mark? I don't know. Brother. Amen. Sister, what did she say? Would you help me, Matt? Come here and help me. Stand right by your daddy right there. Right by your daddy. Brother Darrell, help me. Can you? Is she asleep? Can you help me, Sister Loretta? Come here, Brother Darrell. Just sit. Sit. Amen. Come right here. You stand right here. Amen. Sister Loretta, you need to stand right there. Is you, I don't want, I don't want to wake you up. I'm all right. If they come too, but they, they're sleeping. You stand, stand right over in there, Sister Loretta. You stand right in there. Right there. Amen. Are y'all listening? Brother Robert, help me here. Stand right here. Amen. Come here, Mike. Right here. Amen. Can you excuse me, Brother Luke? He'll need prayer after this. Amen. Got to forgive the spirit of him. Amen. Stay right there. You know what they were doing? Brother Tommy, amen. Will you help me just a minute? Just stand right here. Amen. Come here. Come, when them boys, they asleep. Huh? Come here, boys. Come here with Paul just a minute. Come right here. Now, what, what are you doing? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying the tabernacle was far off. You know what that means, don't you? You're the head of this house. You know you cannot survive. Your family cannot survive as long as that glory is not falling on that tabernacle. Are y'all helping me preach? Who's helping me preach in this house? Huh? You know what this means, don't you, Brother Darrell? You know. You know you've got a wife here that if God don't heal her, amen, it's going to be sad days. Ain't that right or not? Huh? We got to have the presence of God. We can't come in here and just just play games and amen and come in here with our iPods and something in our ear and bobbing at somebody else's music. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't come in here hoping that the service will end so we can get on out of here, go to Giovanni's. Uh, we can't do that. Somebody's life is in jeopardy here. We got to see the glory of God. Uh, amen. And they were watching out the tent door. Amen. How old are you, brother Luke? You can't raise a 13-year-old boy at your age. Oh, sorry. You're the same age as me. You can do it. God will help you. Amen. What about a 10-year-old? Hallelujah. We can't do it. I'll tell you what. Amen. We come with that guitar. We sing our heart out. And we're looking out there all the time through the tent door. Amen. You can't do it. Brother Tommy, I know. Amen. You got in. Amen. And you testify about the life you had. Here's two boys. A clean slate. And I'll never have to know all of that. If we can get the glory of God. Amen. Falling out there one more time. I wish somebody would say amen. I tell you, it's time every one of us got back in the tent door and waited till the glory fell because that's our only way out of this world. You know what happened when they saw that glory fall? You know what they did? They wasn't worshiping a golden calf this time. Uh, they done learned their lesson. They began to worship God. Every one of them worshipped in their tent door. They didn't care who saw them. They didn't care who saw them. Connie, they didn't care who saw them. Amen. I know you've had it rough. Amen. And you buried just about your whole family. Amen. But I want to tell you something. Amen. If the glory of God will fall like it used to fall and like we've seen it fall. Amen. Cindy. Amen. The devil won't get you if the glory will fall. You won't have to worry about your future if the glory will fall. Amen. Somebody help this preacher. Amen. I'll tell you what. I'll bring worship. Amen. Back to the house of God. It's when that pillar, amen, settles down again in the tabernacle of the congregation. <laughs> Kenzie, I want you to come up here, honey. I don't mean to embarrass you. I want you to come up here. Come here, Beck. Come here, boys. Come here, honey. Stand right down the front. I don't mean to embarrass you. I already have too late. I'm going to tell you, sweetheart, I don't mean to embarrass you, honey. Amen. But you know what? You know what we've been going through. 
you know. This is the answer to it, sweetie. We just keep watching for that glory to fall. That's going to be your answer. All them questions you got, sweetie pie, they're going to be answered when that glory falls. Huh? Say amen, church, if I'm right. I'm going to tell you, amen, children. Where's my boys? Come on, boys. Are y'all already? Oh, sorry. Okay, that's all right. Right here. Amen. Come right in here. Eve's right in here. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. Amen. And I'm, I feel like doing this. I wouldn't do it. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to keep looking down there. Becky, when you was five years old, back in the corner of that church, amen, and the Holy Ghost come on you, we're going to look for that Holy Ghost. Isaac, when you was a, amen, got that call to preach while I was down there, amen, preaching in Alabama, when we was going through the trial of our life, uh, amen, and I called back, uh, and you said, Dad, I felt like God called me to preach tonight. We're going to keep watching the glory of that tent door, uh, amen, that's right, uh, amen, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm encouraged tonight, uh, amen, because I ain't going no further uh, until the glory falls. Are uh, oh, you listening to me? Uh, I'm not moving out uh, until God, uh, amen, shows himself uh, and gives Gives us guidance. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I could preach tonight. Thank you for, my, for helping me. I'm going to get the rest of them up here now. I felt this so strong on my heart. Oh, yes, I did. So strong on my heart. I often wonder, Brother Robert, why Joshua was in there with him. Brother Mike, I don't know. Have you ever thought about it? I don't know. If he was a servant, you know. And he really wasn't that young of a man when you look at it. He was 40 years old plus. Moses was 80. He called it, you know, a young man. But he was the next generation. 40 years in a generation, is that right, 40? It was the next generation. You know how? You know what we're going to do? Somewhere, Brother Robert, me and you seem like we're in the middle of a generation or something here. Our elders that we look up to are in their 70s now and 80s. And this new generation's in their 20s and 30s. And we're somewhere hooking these generations. Huh? But I'm going to tell you the same thing it took for the generation that way and the generation that way. It will keep us in this generation right here. Huh? What is it? You know, Moses never did go into the promised land. But you know who let them in and gave every tribe their inheritance? How many knows who it was? It was Joshua. And it doesn't say, but I think he got the unction right there in that tabernacle. He said, I want, he made a choice. You say, I say Moses told him to stay there. I say he made a choice to stay there. Huh? And that's what you've got to do. Whatever it takes, you must choose the glory. Huh? I, whatever, that's why Joshua, when he got into the land, he said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Now, I preached you right. I preached you right. You, you, know, you know we believe wholeness. And you know we believe wholeness that's stimulated from a holy love from the heart of an individual. If you just live a strict standard just to keep in line, you ain't got it. But if you live a strict standard because you love God and you know that pleases Him, amen, then it's going to be fruitful for you. But I'll tell you what, we cannot afford to have church without His glory. Is that right? Stand with me all over. About everybody's standing already. 